Hi, and welcome to this Excel tutorial, where I'm gonna show you how to perform advanced filtering on your data. And I promise anybody can do this. I've got two great examples for you, and if you wanna download the workbook that you see here, make sure to click the link below the video. You can get it for free from teachexcel.com. While you're there, make sure to check out our Excel courses that teach you how to automate the spreadsheet. Everything from building dashboards to clicking a button and having PDF reports sent out to everybody who needs them, to importing, to exporting, to slicing and dicing your data, all with a click of a button. We teach you all of that and more. 60% off, so give it a look. For the first example, we are going to deal with dates. And what I wanna do here is to introduce you to the concept of advanced filtering and how we're gonna go about doing that, and then show you how to visually make it a bit easier. Now, the most important concept here is that this is our raw data. I want to go through it. I do not have all of the information that I need to go through it. How do we fix this problem? Helper columns. That's what you need. You don't have to touch the raw data. You go to the right of it and add new columns for everything that you want to work with. I'd like year, month, and day. Before I work with dates specifically, note that if we click the drop down arrow, we have all sorts of date filters here. This can be quite helpful, but the point of this tutorial is not specific to dates. As well, you'll see in a moment why we need the helper columns. But the first thing for dates is obviously make sure you have a date that is seen as a date. Then let's go over here. And since we're gonna be adding slicers in a moment, I'd like a nice visual way to represent my data. So it's very easy to go through. So what we can do is to use the text function, select this guy here, and tell it how we want it to output. Let's go with four Ys for the year. And what I'm gonna do for this one is go ahead and put number value in front so it is seen as a number. There we go. And let's go over here as well. We'll do three Ms so it's a short month. And right here. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with dates. This tutorial is not going to focus much on that other than to show you the benefit of the helper columns. So now we have year, month, and day. That makes it a lot easier to go through. Let's say that I wanna go and see all of the Mondays from 2021. Maybe Monday is a very special day for our store. We do a promotion or something like that or two for one donuts. So I wanna see how it's performing across 2021. Or I wanna see how it goes across years. Or over here now we can select the months. We can go to table design, insert slicer, maybe go for year and day. I will quickly format this. So we move it up here, up here. And this is just to make it a little bit easier to go through our data. And we can add this now in a nice visual way because we have our helper columns. We'll go seven for that. And then we'll make this guy over here two since we have two years. But now let's say that you don't want your helper columns visible, very easy. Select them, right click, hide them. Now nobody knows that you've got those helper columns, but you've got a nice easy way to go through your data here. Now this was a more simple example with helper columns, but next up let's do a more advanced example. I hope you guys stayed for this because it's going to get a bit more fun. Here I've got a data set of users accessing a website or an app or something. I've got their ID, days since sign up, screen, and action. The real data has many, many, many more columns, including lots of date and time columns. But the point is that I need to get information from it, which is not already included in this data set. Specifically, who is an active user? Notice that I've got some criteria for what is an active user up here. So we need to figure out how to very easily be able to toggle on and off a view for active users, which means 30 plus days since sign up and four distinct visit actions in the last 30 days. For this, we are going to use three helper columns, 30 plus day retention, active count, and is active. I've already added the helper columns, you could add as many more as you need, or you could put it all in a single column. But this method of breaking it up will help you to avoid errors and to change things in the future. But now let's go ahead and build our active user criteria. 
What I want to do is to have the retention value here, the active count here, and then use this cell to manage the other two so that we can filter by a nice, single, simple column. And up here, we're going to build the formula separately to make sure that everything works. Retention is quite simple. I want to choose days since sign up and see if it's greater than or equal to 30. That's it. True, false, perfectly fine. Active count. I need to see if the user has made a visit action. Visit action more than four times in the last 30 days. And we are going to use the count ifs with an s function for this so that we can adjust for multiple criteria. And all I actually have to do here is to check the user ID and then to count the visit actions for that user ID over here because this data set here has already been pre-filtered for the previous 30 days. Criteria range one is the user ID column. Then we want to see if it is equal to the current row that we will be in when we input it into the table. Next, we have criteria range two. That will be for action. So we select the entire column there. Let's go up. I just want to see if it equals a visit. Make it as complex as you need it to be. Verify that it is correct. 135, active count two. Let's verify. Two visits, perfect. All right, now let us pop this into 30 day retention over here and we'll change B9. Let's back it up, click it. So we have the nice table references. Enter, uh, there we go. Active count. Paste it in. Update A9. There we go. Enter. Now one last formula, very easy to do. I want to make sure this is true. This is four or greater. So we use the lovely and function. Does this equal true? And is this greater than or equal to four? Close it up. Three formulas, three helper columns. Now very easy. Who's active? Look at that. It's made so easy to perform complex analysis by breaking it up into smaller pieces and using helper columns. Of course, you can delete this. You don't need this here. This was just to make sure that we got the formulas correct before we put it into the table. And if you want to add a slicer, no problem. This is a great example for a slicer. Is active true false? We could put it right up here. Look how easy that makes it to go through our data. Find out which users are the most important ones and maybe which ones need a bit more attention. Remember, if you want to get this file, download it from teachxl.com. It is completely free. A link below the video. And don't forget to check out our full Excel courses that teach you how to automate the spreadsheet to make your life so much easier, including dashboards, emails, automatic report generation, automatic invoice generation. Make your life easier with the click of a button. Give that course a look. It is currently 60% off only on teachxl.com. If you guys have any questions, uh, let me know here or on the contact form from teachexcel.com. That's all for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe, hit the bell icon, and give us a thumbs up. Have a great day and see you next time.